Hi, this is Amr Abdel Gawad, and we're going to discuss today how to measure the scoliosis angle or what's known as the cup angle. What are the objectives for this lecture? First, we'd like to explain the method of measuring the cup angle, and then also we'd like to speak about research stage and how that affects the progression of scoliosis and how can you detect that in the x-rays. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself and Dr. Osama Naga. So let's discuss the radiographs in general for uh, scoliosis. We're going to concentrate here on adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And remember that adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is mainly a disease of female. It's much more common in females uh, than male. So when you order an, uh, an X-ray, when you're suspecting an adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, please order these X-rays as posterior anterior radiographs and not anteroposterior, because these uh, girls were going to be exposed to many uh, times of radiation during their uh, growth and it's better to try to save the breast tissues from exposing to too much irradiation by getting the x-rays penetrating from the posterior to the anterior surface rather than from the anterior to the posterior surface. So x-rays would be the whole spine, it would be posterior anterior and not anteroposterior. that's to try to decrease the uh, irradiation exposures for the breast tissue. So when you see the x-rays here, these are posterior anterior x-rays, so the right will be on this side, the left will be on this this side. This will not be like when you get a chest x-ray when the right uh, side of the patient is here and left side of the patient here. This uh, how we put the, uh, the scoliosis uh, x-rays. It's put as a posterior anterior as if you're looking to the patient from posterior. The right side will be on this side and the left side will be on this side. And then you start describing the curve with the convex side. So in this case, it's a right th uh, thoracic curve. It means that the convexity is towards the right side. Please note that the vast majority of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis curve are right uh, thoracic curve. It means that the curve uh, is on the thoracic part is convex towards the right. If you get an, a curve to a convex toward the left, uh, that's an indication to get an MRI. So the x-rays is a whole spine, and then uh, you get uh, posterior anterior x-rays. You put the x-rays in this way. The right side of the patient is on this side. The left side of this patient on in this side, as if you're looking to the patient uh, from the back. And then you describe uh, the thoracic curve by the convexity. So this curve, for example, is a right thoracic curve. It means that the thoracic curve is convex towards the right. Let's see now how are we going to uh, measure the cup angle. In this slide, I'm going to show you how to measure the cup angle if you're using a hard copy x-rays. Uh, and then um, the, uh, we can measure uh, the cup angle much easier if you uh, know this technique and, and then you use the electronic uh, PAX system. Uh, so this is a right uh, thoracic curve as we discussed before. This the X-ray is uh, posterior anterior. Right side is on this side. Left side on this side. You can see the heart here. This is a right thoracic curve. Uh, m vast majority of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis it's right thoracic curve. Remember there is two curves here: is the thoracic curve and this is the lumbar curve. So uh, we have to measure both curves: the right thoracic curve and the left lumbar curve. First thing that you have to do is you have to uh, pick what's called the most tilted vertebra. Uh, there is the upper uh, most tilted vertebra and lower most tilted vertebra for each curve. So for this thoracic curve, uh, let's pick the most tilted vertebra, upper and lower. And uh, before we do this, uh, um, I have to tell you that this is an eyeballing thing. Uh, it's not something that you measure. Um, that's why it m you may um, have different opinions if two are measuring uh, curves. Uh, you may differ in which is the most tilted vertebra. However, if this happened, most probably these vertebrae, these two vertebrae that uh, uh, there is discrepancy, uh, usually have a very similar tilt. And if you pick any of them, usually the uh, uh, reading will be uh, very similar. Remember that there is uh, uh, an inter-observer uh, variation of this angle that uh, we all know about uh, five degrees. Uh, so there will always be uh, some difference if uh, two person uh, measure um, the, the same angle. Uh, so uh, here is the upper thoracic curve as we said we have to pick the upper most tilted vertebra and the lower most tilted vertebra so if you see here and if you look to each vertebra what is the most tilted i think this is the most tilted vertebra to this side so if you see this vertebra is tilted more than this and more than this again this is an eyeballing and uh, two physicians looking to the same x-ray may pick two different ones so we will pick this as the most tilted vertebra i think this is tilted more than this one and more than this one 
it's tilted to this way now let's go to the lower most tilted vertebra in the thoracic curve uh, and I think this is more tilted than this one and this one so we'll pick this as the lower most tilted vertebra so we'll pick this as the upper most tilted vertebra and this as the most uh, tilt, uh, lower most tilted vertebra if you pick this as the lower most tilted vertebra for the thoracic curve this will be your uh, most tilted vertebra for the lumbar curve and I, if you see here this is tilted to this way for this way I think this is tilted more than this way and this way so we will pick this as the lower most tilted vertebra again this is an eyeballing so now you pick the uh, um, the most tilted vertebra in the upper and the lower parts of the curve in both the thoracic and lumbar uh, uh, mark them so as we said this one this one this one and this one now after we uh, pick the, the upper and the lower most tilted vertebra we're going to draw line uh, on the superior uh, end vertebra for the upper tilted uh, most tilted vertebra and for the inferior end plate for the most tilted uh, lower most tilted vertebra and we'll repeat the same in the lumbar curve so we pick this as you see and then th this is the superior uh, most tilted vertebra so we draw a line across the uh, uh, superior end plate and we draw a line here uh, along the inferior end plate of the lower most tilted vertebra uh, and we repeated the same for the lumbar side so first thing pick your upper and lower uh, tilted vertebra and then after that draw a line across the superior end plate for the upper uh, tilted vertebra inferior tilted plate for the lower uh, tilted vertebra after that if this is an electronic version it will give you the angle immediately as we're going to see in the next time if this not an electronic version uh, it's a hard copy you want to measure the angle between these two lines you cannot extend uh, these two lines because they will meet far away uh, outside the hard copy that you have so in order for us to uh, overcome this problem what we do is we draw perpendicular lines so you have this line here draw a perpendicular line on it you have this line here draw a perpendicular line on it and then repeat the same thing for the lumbar uh, curve so this angle now is the angle between these two lines but as i said because we cannot keep extending these two lines they will meet far away we just draw a perpendicular on them and the angle between the two perpendicular will be equal to the angle between these two lines so this is your cup angle here for this curve and this is your cup angle here for this curve i hope it's easy so again let's go quickly so you pick what is the upper and the lower tilted vertebra in each curve and then you draw a line superior and uh, superior end plate for the uh, upper vertebra inferior end plate for the upper vertebra and then repeat the same for the lumbar and then you draw perpendicular over them and then you measure the angle between the two perpendicular it's a little bit easier if you're using uh, electronic digital x-rays like the PAC system uh, so the first step would be the same you look for the x-ray you will decide what is the uh, most tilted vertebra above and below for each curve as we did for the uh, hard copy uh, but then you will uh, click on the icon that will uh, measure the angle which in this system for example is this icon uh, it differs in different systems uh, but they will, uh, all the system has the ability to measure angles for you so you'll click on that and then you will uh, draw the line for the uh, superior end the plate uh, for the upper uh, tilted vertebra inferior tilted plate for the uh, lower tilted uh, most tilted vertebra and it will immediately give you the number you don't have to draw the perpendicular it will draw this for you another um, important aspect that you have to ass uh, assess in the x-ray is the uh, bone maturation uh, this is important because adolescent idiopathic scoliosis uh, progress with the patient uh, skeletal maturation so if the patient had reached uh, near his skeletal maturity uh, or he had reached uh, full skeletal maturation that means that the uh, possibility of the curve progress is much less uh, so we use the recessive stage for this recessive stage is the ossification of the apophysis of the iliac crest so here is the iliac crest and here is the apophysis above the iliac crest uh, so this apophysis um, uh, ossification of it uh, happens from lateral to medial uh, and uh, we uh, divide that uh, apophysis into four uh, parts and with progression of each part that's um, is, uh, that uh, recessive uh, stage uh, progression so if there is no 
no ossification at all, that's called restor stage zero. If there is ossification of 25%, uh, that restor stage one, of 50% restor stage two, of 75% restor stage three, and um, if there is ossification of the whole uh, apophysis, that restor stage four. If this area starts now to uh, obliterate and the apophysis is um, uh, fused with the iliac crest, that restor stage five. So uh, please note that Reser stage 5 and Reser stage 0 looks exactly identical uh, because all what you see, it, you will see the bone of the iliac crest. So you will see the bone of the iliac crest uh, that can be stage 0 or stage 5. How can you differentiate? But this you look to the, uh, gr uh, to the growth plate uh, of the uh, triradiate cartilage. If the triradiate cartilage is open, it means that you can see the triradiate cartilage. This most probably stage zero. If it's closed, this is most probably stage five. I'm going to show you some examples of Risser stage so you understand what we mean by that. So if you see here, this is the iliac crest. And if you see the, the line of the, of the apophysis, you still can see the line of the apophysis. And the, uh, growth, uh, the growth plate, the apophysis uh, of the iliac crest had um, ossified all the way to the lateral side. So we're seeing here the left side. So we're seeing um, uh, this side. If you see, this is the, all the way from here to here. Uh, that means that this is a racer stage four. This is not five because you, can, you still can see this line. If uh, the apophysis fuses with the iliac crest, you will not see this, and this will be stage five. Uh, this is another example here that you can see. This is Risser stage four again. Um, this is a, an X-ray of the scoliosis, and I'm uh, doing here a close-up for the pelvis, and you can see both sides here. The growth plate, the, uh, the ossification of the apophysis went all the way from lateral to medial, went all the way from lateral to medial, uh, so this is considered uh, um, Risser stage 4. Um, after a few months, this will uh, fuse, so you won't see this line, and this will change to Risser stage 5. So this is an x-ray for a patient presenting with scoliosis. So uh, we will do the same as we discussed before. We're going to assess where is the most tilted vertebra above and below and draw our uh, angle. Um, and then after that, we'd like to assess the maturation of this uh, child. Uh, so let's do a close up for his uh, pelvis. So if you see, this is a close up for the picture here. You don't see any um, ossification above the iliac uh, uh, wing. So this uh, can be stage zero. So there is no ossification at all, or it can be stage five. It means that the uh, apophysis has ossified completely and then it fused with the main iliac bone. So what you do is you go for the uh, 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 triradiate cartilage here. You see it's open. So this means that this is a stage zero. So this is a risser stage uh, zero for this patient. So this is a picture that I'm presenting uh, for you to see how it looks when the triradiate cartilage is uh, open. So if you see here, this is called the triradiate here, this is called the triradiate here, and you can see here, uh, when you see this line is still, uh, this means that it's an open triradiate, that means that the cartilage here is not fully ossified. Uh, with time, when this ossifies, this will be a, uh, uh, this uh, edulucent line will disappear, and this all will be a continuous bone. Uh, so in this condition, we call this open triradiate. When this uh, radiolucent line disappear uh, this is called close the triradiate and this how can we differentiate between risser stage 0 and risser stage 5 this is another example so uh, this is a patient with rhizorothic curve uh, if you see here we first you decide where is the upper most tilted vertebra lower most tilted vertebra you draw your angles and then you'd like to see the maturation if you see this is a close-up picture so the, i would say this is a, a stage 4-5 uh, it means it's four but it's most of the in in areas here of the uh, iliac wing it's fusing already so you don't see the line here you can see a little bit of the line here a little bit of the line here but in most of the iliac crest this is a, a close up for this picture and most of the uh, most of the iliac crest you don't see the line so that means that this is a very close of being a clo uh, stage uh, five or between stage four and five and if you look here uh, uh, this is the uh, area of the triradiate cartilage you don't see the triradiate cartilage now so it is uh, closed so this is a stage five it's not stage zero uh, it is a stage five because you can uh, still see parts here so that's most probably four going to five and because the uh, the uh, cartilage of the triradiate cartilage is uh, already fused so this is a risser stage five
This is another example also for his stage. Here is a patient with scoliosis, and then you see the pelvis. If this is a close up for the uh, pelvis here, you can see uh, you can see only the ossification in about 25% of the iliac crest. So this is considered stage RISER one. Uh, and if you can see by the RISER one already, the growth plate of the triradiate cartilage had closed. Thank you for listening. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision. Thank. You.